Welcome back. I have a really fun one today. I'm super excited about this. We have another tutorial on how to create this exact same maker coin with the fidget spinner aspect to it. Now the important thing about this series and what I love about it so much is that it's been community sourced. You out there watching have been contacting me and wanting to contribute a tutorial on how to do it in a different CAD program each time and that is freaking awesome. We can all learn from each other and there's so many to choose from. Uh, we have already designed this, same measurements, same everything in Fusion 360, FreeCAD, and OpenSCAD, I believe. The links to those will be down in the description below along with some links to some books from our Maker Shed to help you learn some CAD design. In this video, Chris from CNC Labs is going to be telling us about Onshape, why he likes it, and then he'll go into the tutorial on creating this with the same exact dimensions, same parts, and everything. So you can learn how to do it in Onshape. Let's just jump straight to Chris. Hi guys, my name is Chris, and um, I'm a background in mechanical engineering. I've been doing CAD for a long time, probably around 10 or so years. And um, my background in learning how to do 3D modeling uh, was actually the same probably as a lot of you, where I wanted to start to learn how to model things so I could 3D print them. This was uh, back before Tinkercad. I was using 123D Design, which was a great intro tool. And that kind of was rolled into Tinkercad what it is today. So if you're starting off, Tinkercad is a really good starting point. Um, but I kind of uh, found it limiting, and so I moved up to SolidWorks and then to Onshape, and that's what I'm still using to this day. Um, so I thought that I might show you how you could make a Maker Coin in Onshape. Um, and the great thing about Onshape is that it's a free program, and um, all of the models by default are pub publicized uh, to be open use. And so anyone's models that you can make, you can share them around and you can go find what other people have made. And actually this is the software that my company uses for our official open source um, CNC designs. And so if you're interested in seeing those or copying those, you can feel free to grab them as well. So, okay, so here we are in Onshape and I was thinking um, I might approach this two ways. I'm going to first make the coin the way that Caleb made it, and I'm just going to use his dimensions as well. And then I'm going to do it a second way, which is kind of me using my uh, design or 3D modeling experience to know that there's a bit of a faster way that it could be made. And just to show you guys uh, what an alternative way could be if you kind of are able to approach the design in advance. Um, so we're going to start just like he did, and I'm going to make a sketch on this top plane. I'm just going to press N, the, the N key, so it brings me to the normal view of that plane. And we're going to make a circle and extrude that. And that's going to be 10 millimeters. And I forgot to make that circle 40 millimeters. And I'm just dimensioning it here. And I'm just going to hide these planes because I like working in a more clean environment. But um, this is normally the visible planes for the front, right, and top. So we added a chamfer onto the top and bottom edges here of two millimeters. And you can see how um, the in Onshape it kind of builds the features down this way. Um, and then next we sketched out a circle. So I'm going to choose that same top plane and, and draw another circle here. Um, and you can see there's these automatic alignments going on here. And I can also, for instance, grab the top and the edge of the circle there and make them uh, coincident, which means just they overlap. And then I can select my dimension tool and give that a four millimeter dimension. And instead of um, arraying these around first, which I could do with a, a circular pattern here, I'm just going to actually uh, extrude it and remove it from the circle here. And then what I'm going to do after that is I'm actually going to um, do a pattern after the fact. And 
make it a feature pattern. And so I'm going to actually click this feature that I just made. And you can see it's highlighted it there. And pattern it around the circle here with 24 instances. And now you can see that that's kind of been made there. And then we're going to go and click the top face again and align it to the center and dimension that as 24 millimeters and extrude that again as a remove through. And once again, chamfer them. These chamfers, you can do different types of chamfers. These are just equal chamfers. Uh, top and bottom in 45 degree. And um, Onshape doesn't have the exact same thing as uh, Fusion does, but I can do a section view of the front plane here to go in and see what it looks like here. And then what I can do is when I make a new sketch on that front plane, um, I can select this inner geometry here and um, basically do an intersection of the front plane with that geometry and then you can go see it's gone and made these lines here and then what I can do is I can select these lines and offset them and uh, type in 0.2 here so I've got a 0.2 offset and then I can just grab these lines and I can kind of um, like remind the CAD that I want to be in line with the center point here when I draw these. And you can see these lines look a little bit janky, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some constraints. So I'm going to use like a horizontal constraint, which is just uh, the H key. So I'm just going to hit H and H and then click these two points and hit H so that that's all horizontal there. And then I'm just going to immediately revolve this as well around the center point. And then once I take this out of the section view, you can see I've now got my two parts. Um, this is like the inside part here and the outside part here, obviously. And uh, yeah, if I want to, I can go back and I can edit any of these dimensions and um, like even this original dimension, I can like make this 60, but the whole size will obviously stay the same. So if you want like a really wide diameter hole and, and there's anything else you can go back in time and change. So I kind of like that about uh, how Onshape works. You can kind of see all the operations you made here. So um, I'm just going to start a new part studio here and show you an alternative way you can make this exact same geometry. Um, and basically how I'm looking at this is, uh, this was quite a few operations here. And so if I wanted to go back and change one of these, I could go and um, like name the operation. If I'm trying to remember, uh, like this one was the center cutout. So I could call it like center cutout so that I can help Oh no, that was the that was a whole cutout. But yeah, you can name them so you can remember what they do. Um, but I prefer to try to re reduce the operations when I can so that um, this uh, tree of features, it's called a feature tree normally, is as uh, small as possible so that it's easy to know what's where. And most of this geometry is circular. And so if I wanted to consider it in another way, um, I could m consider making it almost entirely from a singular sketch that is circular. So I'm going to show how to do that. So I'm going to make a sketch in this front plane here and go normal to it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with um, a line in construction mode and make a line that's down. And then I'm just going to press L and L again to toggle on and off lines and make another line that is horizontal. And then I can make another line, um, but not in construction mode to come out this way. And so the regular coin has a chamfer on it, so I can draw in a chamfer 
And we'll start off just like this. I'm going to make this line vertical with, uh, by pressing V. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I know that the coin is going to be 40 millimeters in diameter. So if I drag the dimension past this center line, um, it lets me specify the diameter because it knows that I might be revolving it. And so I can specify that 40 millimeters. And then I can dimension this past the center line and make that 10 millimeters because I know I'm going to extrude it up 10 millimeters. And then my chamfer's just gotten a little messed with there. I can make this dimension 2 millimeters because I know. I was going to make a two millimeter chamfer. And then because chamfers are normally 45 degrees, I'll make that 45 degrees. And at first this kind of looks weird, but the last two steps I'm going to do will show how this is going to turn into the initial coin. Um, so I'm going to hit mirror and this is going to be my mirror line. And I'm going to mirror these three lines here. And then I'm going to um, finish off by closing this up and hitting revolve. And then I can select this profile here and select my revolve axis. And now that's going to be making the coin. Now, at first, this seems a little less, in, less efficient because um, I could have just extruded the 40 millimeters and put a chamfer on it. But I'm going to show you how I can go back into the sketch and now add the remaining geometry. Um, so because I know that I'm going to cut this out uh, 20 millimeters in, then uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to add a theoretical cut going into this circle. Um, I'm just going to delete this while I do my work, and then I'll come back to it. So this is going to be the 24 millimeter hole that we're making in the coin. And then when we're making that cutout through the coin, we're chamfering both sides uh, four millimeters. So I'm going to draw that theoretical chamfer of uh, four millimeters here. And then this is also 45 degrees. And so I'm just going to make these two lines um, perpendicular to each other. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, mirror these up and uh, complete the sketch again and um, just make sure that I've got my revolve axis here. So once again, I've now got my cut through with my 45s top and bottom. And this is starting to look like the maker coin and I still have it within one sketch. I'll show you we can also do the inside of it. So I can grab this geometry and this geometry or the, the two lines there and make my offset. of uh, 0 0.2 and then make my lines across here and intersect this here and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take my little trimming scissors here and just snip that and make this line horizontal. Um, actually, I don't need this line. I'm just going to intersect this with this. And then I'm going to mirror these. And normally, uh, you would do this all, oops. Normally, you do this all in one go. Um, uh, you'd kind of draw this geometry in one go. But I'm just, just trying to do it in steps. Um, so I can better demonstrate what those steps are. And I'm going to close this off here. Um, and so now what happens is 
this automatically sees that I've got two profiles here. I've got this outer profile and this inner profile. And so it goes and it creates the two separate geometries which is the same inside and the same outside. And so now that the, the, most of the maker coin has already been made in this one sketch, I just have to add the circles. And that's uh, going to look the exact same as it did with the original design, where I'm just making a sketch on the top, drawing a circle here, um, intersecting the top, making that circle four millimeters. Extruding that through and just reversing the direction because it wants to go the wrong way. And actually I need to set this one to um, symmetric so that it's going through both ways. And then I can do my circular pattern of feature instead of a part around, you can just check, uh, click off whatever circular axis you have. And it just uh, assumes that I'm going through this part because it's already there. But if it was intersecting both parts, then it would ask me which part do I want to do it to, or I could choose to do it to both parts. Um, so you can see in comparison to the original one, these look the exact same. Um, but while this one has 15 uh, features in the tree, uh, this one only has nine. And um, it gives me just a singular sketch that I can go back to if I wanted to modify the height or the diameter or the chamfer or the other chamfer or the spacing. It's all just in a single sketch. And because uh, this top geometry is actually a mirror of this bottom geometry, I don't have to change it in the two places. I can just change it in the one place and then it'll mirror and then uh, propagate through the revolve to make the coin. So I hope that that was all relatively self-explanatory. And um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, I'll try to watch the comments of the video and answer wherever I can. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Like I said before, there's links down below to the previous videos. If you'd like to contribute one of these videos, look at what we've already done. Comment down below. Let me know if you've got some other piece of software that you want to give a try to. We haven't done a few of the big ones out there even, like, uh, like SolidWorks or anything. So I would love to have those contributed. There's links to books from our Maker Shed and the previous videos. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope you like this series. Give us a thumbs up. It helps us a lot. And I'll see you on the next video.